10s and grade 11. So this is mainly focused on the grade 11, although we do this um, for which values of x solving um, functions graphically in grade, 10, sorry, in grade 10 already. Just this parabola in grade 10, we wouldn't have shifted it left or right. Um, it will always be symmetrical about the y-axis where x is 0. Okay, so that's the only difference. And whenever you see these types of questions, please don't get a fright. It is really, really easy to solve. So I'm going to show you step by step all these nitty gritty types of questions where we have to solve equations and inequalities graphically. Okay, so this diagram um, shows that the graphs of f of x and g of x, um, which is given here in green and red, and it says the graph cuts f, um, uh, sorry, the graph of f cuts the x-axis at a, which is this negative 4, 0, and b at 1, 0. Okay, and then the graph of f and g intersect at a as well, negative 4, 0, and at c, which was given 2, 6. Okay, so we need these critical points as that, that is where the one graph exceeds the other one, goes over onto the other one, or where the other one goes underneath. So it's very important that these points have been given, although we could have calculated them. The x-intercepts for a and b, where you make y 0, or the point of intersection where you equate the two um, equations to each other. All right, okay, so it says determine graphically the values for x. So always what values for x are very important for which values of x um, is the following. So f of x bigger than zero. So f of x is our green graph. Where is it bigger than zero? So remember f of x is in actual fact the y values. Where is the graph of, graph of f Y, where's his y values bigger than zero? So obviously, obviously, if you remember your axis, you've got your y axis over here and your x axis over there, and your positive y values is going to lie here at the top. So where is f of x bigger than zero? So can you see it? I always say to the kids, it's like having a sea level. So if this is your ocean, where is it above, where is it bigger than zero? Where is it sticking out above um, the ocean line? And can you see that it's this part as well as this part that is bigger than zero? Okay, so at this point, very important. So it comes, this carries on and on and on and on, and it will come from negative infinity all the way to that point. And then again, from this point, going forward all the way to infinity. Okay, so I'm just going to clear up everything just so that we don't have all this writing. Um, although I like to keep that. Okay, so can you see that it's this part as well as that part? Okay, and it carries on and on and on. So what you can do is you can say x is an element from negative infinity all the way up to that point, which is negative 4, or x is an element of that point, which was 2, no, sorry, made a mistake, from this point, because that's where it crosses over into the positive at the top of the x-axis, so it's from 1 all the way to infinity. Okay, so very, very important. Infinity is never, ever included because we don't know where infinity goes to and as well as negative infinity. But this negative 4, because I didn't have a stripey underneath, it told me it's bigger than 0. So not including 0, but just bigger than 0. And that's why it's anything... Um, uh, up to negative 4, but not including negative 4. So that is why we're going to have a round bracket over here. Or some of my kids say a soft bracket, the hard brackets and the soft brackets. Okay, so we're going to have a round bracket over there. Another way you could have written it, um, because I know that we are taught all differently, is you could have said that x is wedged between negative 4 
and negative infinity, or x is wedged between um, 1 all the way to infinity and not including, not including. Okay, so I'm just going to try and write all the types um, of answers that you can get as well. Okay, um, another way you could have written it as well is where you just say that x has to be smaller than that negative 4 or x must be bigger than 1. That is another way you could have written it. Okay, so whatever is easiest for you, you choose your answer. Okay, so where's f of x smaller than or equal to 0? So smaller than is at the bottom of the ocean. So it's going to be that part over there. So, but also, let uh, be careful, um, it's inclusive as well. So because there's a little stripey over there, we're going to include it as well. Let me just get a nice different color. So you can write that x, x is wedged between and inclusive all the way from 1, from negative 4 to 1. So from negative 4 all the way on to 1. Okay, another way you could have written it um, is that x is an element of uh, all the way from negative 4 until 1 and inclusive brackets because of that little stripey underneath. Okay, not too bad, not so sad. Okay, where is f of x equal to g of x? So where are the two graphs exactly, exactly the same? So remember from the beginning, where is x? For which values of x is f of x equal to g of x? And you've guessed it. Yes, it's these two parts where they cross each other, where their paths intersect. And what is the x value over here? Negative 4. And what is the x value over there? It's 2. All right. So it's where x is negative 4 or x is equal to 2. Excellent. Okay, where is f of x? Okay, where is f of x bigger than g of x? So where is the green graph lying on top of my red graph? So where is my green graph lying at the top of the green graph? So can you see this part over here is the only part where the straight line is lying on top of the parabola? Okay, so from this part over here, the green is at the top and as well from here again. Okay, so it's going to come in from negative infinity all the way up to negative 4 and as well from 1, sorry, not 1, where they intersect that part, which is 2, all the way to infinity. Okay, and so I always say write down what you have to, the numbers, and then afterwards we're going to see what brackets do we have to have? So you can say x is an element of from negative infinity all the way to negative 4. And because it's an inclusive bracket, we have to have square brackets. Or x is an element of from that 2 all the way to infinity. Um, and I've already made a mistake, sorry. Infinity is always soft brackets. So just always double check afterwards. Have you not made a silly, silly little mistake the like I've done now as well? Okay, so for D, um, X goes all the way from negative infinity up to negative 4. Or X um, goes ranges from 2 to infinity. Another way you could have written it is you could have said X is smaller than or equal to negative 4. Or x is bigger than or equal to 2. Okay, all right. Now they say to you, where is f of x smaller than g of x? So obviously it's the opposite of what we've just written. Where is it smaller than? And can you see here yeah, at the bottom, that is where he is smaller than. So it ranges from negative 4 all the way to 2. So x is an element from negative 4 all the way to 2, and are we going to include it? No, it's going to be soft brackets. Um, um, do, do, do. Another way you could have written it is x is wedged between negative 4 all the way to 2. All right, 
Okay, not so bad. I hope that maybe you could have done this from the beginning yourself and hopefully you're just checking whether you are getting it right. Okay, now they say to you, where is g of x minus f of x 8? So the distance between the two graphs must be 8. So the distance from there to there, we are looking for a jump of four blocks. Now we don't really know where it could be, but if we look at our y intercepts at the back, can you see that the one uh, intercepts here at four, the straight line, and then the parabola, it tells me because of the backside is the y intercept. The backside is the y intercept. So exactly there, it will be four units apart. Okay, so what is the value of x over there? Because remember, they say determine graphically the value of x for which f of x minus g of, oh, sorry, g of x minus f of x, because the g of x is on top, minus f of x is 8. So it is where x is 0. Goody, goody. Okay, now these types of questions always flaws my, not all my kids, some of the kids. And um, so it's where is the two y values of the graphs bigger than zero? So what does bigger than zero mean? It means it is a positive. Okay, so now where the two y values are positive. So if you look at your graph, and let me just up a little bit so we don't have all the extra. Um, I'm going to take the graph away. Um, Let's do that. That's the best I can do. Okay. Um, this part, the parabola y intercept is a positive y because it's lying on top of the y axis. Sorry, on top of the x axis at the positive part. Then the straight line is a negative because it's lying at the bottom part of the y axis. So what is a positive? Times a negative. It is a negative. So that is when it is smaller than. That is where we're going to look at. Then they put sides, and the one is a positive because it's at the top. And this parabola is a negative. And a positive and a negative, see all along the way here, it's a positive. And a positive and a negative. Negative. Now, at the top here, this one's y value. As well as your straight line, which is also positive everywhere, all along. These two will stay positive. So, can you see where f of x times g of x is bigger than zero means where are the two y values multiplied and divided? It works exactly the same for division as well. Where are the two positives? So, can you see that x? must be bigger than zero. Okay, are we going to include it? Is there a little stripey underneath? No, so x must be bigger than zero. Excellent. All right, so where's f of x times g of x bigger than or equal to zero? So let's have a look. Again, it's all to do with the positive and the positive. Over here, it carries on being positive. So where x is bigger than 0, so x is bigger than, but because there's a little stripey underneath, we're going to say x is bigger than or equal to 0. But now we need to see, when we multiply, it gives us a 0. So where the 2 multiplied will give you a 0. Can you see on this spot... The two values, um, a zero, um, let me just see, a, a, a zero times a zero is also a zero. So we have to include all where x is negative four. Just that one little point we have to include as well, just to make sure that we've included all the types of answers. Um, so x where x is negative four, or where x is bigger than or equal to, um, oopsie, I've made a mistake, you see now, <laughs> and I think you all saw that. Um, it's not zero, <laughs> but can you see, yeah, it's still a negative because it's underneath. Only from that number one onwards, 
that is where it becomes a positive and a positive. So, sorry, x is bigger than or equal to 1 or x is bigger than 1. If you saw it and you screamed it and you thought, hey man, um, I see that you are making a mistake, then well done. Sorry, luckily I realized that so that I don't teach you incorrectly. Okay, so um, this little part, that parabola's y values is still a negative and a negative times that positive gives you a negative which is smaller than zero okay um where's f of x times g of x smaller than zero so where's the one at the top and the one at the bottom so can you see the one is here at the top at the bottom then they swap top bottom and yeah bottom <laughs> top so all the way until one that is where the cutoff is so x must be smaller than one x is smaller than one and it's not inclusive so it's just x is smaller than one you could have also written um x is an element from negative infinity all the way to one okay and then the last one, where is f of x times g of x smaller than or equal to 1? So we are just going to say x is smaller than or equal to 1. Okay, so because of the little stripey, we're going to include the 1 as well. Okay, the other thing you could have written is x is an element from negative infinity all the way to 1, including from negative infinity all the way to one including the one over there i just want to make sure double sure and there's no other point here because from there they are all above and they will never go and touch the x-axis like they did in this previous question where we had to include it okay i hope it makes a bit more sense that it <laughs> all the scribble and scrabble that you could at least um see what was going on um but yeah these type of questions please don't be scared of them they're about two marks each um and try your best and just make sure that you read the graphs um and especially these ones so remember multiplication it's the same as if they had to say divide by um exactly the same you treat it um you treat it exactly the same. Okay. All right. Grade 10s, grade 11s. I hope you can floor these types of questions and that you will never, ever struggle with them again. Okay. Hope you have a great day and thank you for watching. Cheers. Bye.